Hey, Mike here with Canadian Musician. Uh, just arriving at North by Northeast and sitting next to me at the Hyatt's uh, Regency Hotel downtown is Kale Matson. Kale, thanks for joining me, man. Yeah, thank you. And uh, So like we were uh, just mentioning, you just found out only three hours ago you were saying that uh, your latest album, Someday the Moon Will Be Golden, was nominated or long listed for the Polaris Prize. Uh, yeah. First time with your third album, the first time you've been uh, on the Polaris list. Uh, I guess having literally just found that out, what's, uh, <laughs> what do you think about it? Um, I, was, I was really, really anxious about it. Um, I, I, I think I knew that there was a, a shot, but I, I didn't really think that it would get long listed. Um, but it, it's amazing. I mean, I remember when the first Polaris Prize came out, and I hadn't even been—I had, I hadn't even started writing songs yet. <laughs> so it's 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 amazing, and and it's a really good list this year. So yeah. Nice. And uh, yeah, like you were saying, I, I haven't actually just came out today. The list I haven't actually seen what's on it. Um, before getting a new one, if you've been taking a look, you said it's a good list. Uh, for you, let's assume that you will be shortlisted. What, 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 <laughs> what do you think you'd be up against, or who do you think uh, would also be on there? Uh, well, if I was a betting man, I would not bet on my record to get on it. Uh, I, th I think the Mac DeMarco record's great. I really like the Timber Tambor record. Um, the Bri Webb record's really good. Um, it's a really good list, and a lot of records that I, I genuinely love. So it's, it's really, I feel honored to have the rec my record in there. Yeah. And like I mentioned, uh, your latest record, now the Polaris-nominated uh, record, we can call it. <laughs> it's uh, Someday the Moon Will Be Golden. Uh, with it, it's your, I believe it's your fourth release in five years, third LP, and you also have an EP in there. Uh, looking at your progression in it, as a songwriter from album to album or re release to release, where do you think this, I guess, compares? Do you see a progression from album to album? Yeah, I, I think it's really obvious. Um, I worked the hardest on this record, and I spent the longest amount of time on it. And um, y you know, I think it's—I mean, I think it's the best one. And uh, I think for me, when you hear the records, you can. There's an obvious progression because I, I've only—I've only been doing it for a, a short enough, pound, you know, five years or whatever. I've been writing songs, so I think like each release, there's a real progressive shift in terms of, you know, the songwriting and the sounds of the record and. Just getting closer to what you know I hear in my head, I guess. I don't, yeah. And the the writing for this album, uh, as you've been pretty open about, like it comes from an extremely personal and also a bit of a well, I want to say a bit. It is a, a tragic place that it comes from. Uh, it's heavily inspired by the uh, the passing of your mom when you were in high school, which uh, I believe you're, if I remember correctly, you're in grade eleven or around that time. But why? I think it's been five or six years later why revisit such a personal uh, spot in your life for this album at this time um it was i moved back home to my hometown to see saint marie ontario to work a job so i could pay for this record um and i ended up you know i had a lot of the music but i didn't have the lyrics for the record and i ended up writing you know all the lyrics to the record in my childhood home which was you know, f for the first time in five years, I was living there in my childhood home alone for the first time. And, you know, I, I, I really genuinely be believe that for me personally, and I don't think most 16 year olds are capable of sort of dealing with, um, you know, losing a parent. And I didn't deal with it. And I sort of dealt with it by writing the record. And, and um, yeah, you, I think you hear that for sure. Um, yeah. When when did you first start writing songs? I believe you were only 19 when your first album came out. Eh? Yeah, my first record was I got really lucky and I got to record the first 11 songs I ever wrote. Really? Um, yeah, <laughs> I got to record them for free. And, uh, you know, like most people wouldn't have a record that early on, but I just happened to get a really, you know, lucky opportunity. And, you know, for most people, I think that would be a demo. So, you know, in a lot of ways, I think, you know, the new record is the, my first record because I feel like it's the first one <laughs> in a lot of you know in a, in a bunch of different ways. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. So actually, I'd kind of like to expand on that point when you say it's it feels like your first record, uh, which I guess could come as a surprise, may seem odd considering you've had three. Well, this is your third full length and an EP in there. It's a lot of output. In what sense is this a? Do you mean that in a sense that this feels like your fullest, most uh, I guess, well-crafted record? Like, how do you mean that? 
Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, it totally is. It's the one that I spent, like I said, the most spent the most time on. I feel like I got to record it in a way that I wanted to for the first time. Um, and I just felt like, you know, I'm not embarrassed by this record, right, you know? And I don't hate the songs, and I don't hate playing them every night, which, you know, every, all my other re releases weren't sort of caught up to me by the time they came out. Like, I wrote them, recorded them, and then six months later they come out, and I'm already past it. And I feel like with this record, it's still, it's, it's uh, you know, holding its own, I guess, you know? And I, I still, I mean, I have another record already written, but I still like this one, and I still like playing it every night. A few things in there actually that I want to touch on, but we say like with the the previous records, by the time they came out and you're you're promoting them, play, uh, touring, uh, you say you're embar like we're embarrassed by the songs. Like, is that just because you didn't think they were well written? Like, and we'll, how is that? I'm not embarrassed by all the songs, certain ones, but yeah, I mean, I think that a lot of them sound like I was 19 or 20, and although this one sounds like I wrote it when I was 21, and I was, but uh, I, I, it was a really big shift for me. It was a really big shift for me on this record. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I, li I don't listen to them ever, but when I do hear one of the older songs, it sounds so bizarre to me, like, especially my singing and stuff like that, too. Like a, This record, I think I finally sort of got closer to sounding like me yeah and well with that and there's a few so like, I uh, just earlier today I was listening to uh, Thick as Thieves kind of on repeat I love that song oh, thank you. and uh, but that also came with as I've seen you talk about in the past uh, Thick as Thieves as well as I think it was Waterfalls the other song that had these what are always called viral videos kind of blew up online and that and but with that especially for an indie artist or uh, emerging artist like yourself what what's the place of a music video in this day and age like you've seen what it can do with those two songs but in an era when music videos aren't for tv they're really an online medium do you see them as essential are they tools like essentially what's the purpose of a music video i think it's uh it's a really good way of getting you know your name out there and then hopefully your song out there and hopefully your record out there i mean to have a good one can do a lot of stuff for you especially press wise and um you know, I mean, I, I feel really happy, like, you know, lucky that I got two really good music videos. I didn't make them. I mean, <laughs> uh, I wanted them to go viral, and it was definitely when me and my friend Kevin Perry, who made um, those music videos with me, we wanted to make viral music videos, but we didn't, you know, we didn't have any money. We didn't have any, we didn't even have a publicist for Thick as Thieves. It really just happened completely on its own. Um, but it, it's, it's huge. If you can have one, it's amazing. Um, but it's weird the internet's a really weird fickle place you know and it's um to get people to stare at something for three and a half minutes is really hard <laughs> yeah Fair enough. And, uh, now to kind of back up uh, a minute ago you said that for the first time with this album uh, someday the moon will be golden you you said it was the first time you've recorded it the way you want to record it uh w with that what was that recording process um, it was, it was pretty scattered. I mean, I, maybe it wasn't exactly the way I'd want to record it, but it was, I, I was really happy with, um, that it, it took a really long time to record it, but that allowed it, allowed me to, you know, think of the songs differently and it wasn't rushed, you know, it was, we took our time with it and we, we tracked most of it here in Toronto, um, with Gavin Gardner, who plays in the band The Wooden Sky, and he produced the record and, um, I rec recorded a lot at home as well um, but it was you know I got to spend time on it and I never spent any time on, on my other records it was we record it for the two weeks that we get to record and that's it it's done you know and this one we sort of it was like almost a full year from pre-production to actually being done with the final master and uh, go back to songwriting I'm just always curious about who your influences were if you see a direct influence of others in the work you do like for me whenever I hear something you know na names of other artists will pop up to me as far as what it kind of sounds like or what I think it's uh it might be inspired by but I'm always curious of whether that actually matches up with what the artist sees like who who do you are your direct influences um Wilco is probably the biggest one I mean they're, they're my favorite band like ever uh, uh and Jeff Tweedy's easily my favorite songwriter ever um you know Springsteen is a really big one as well, especially on this record. You know, I wanted the record to start off like Badlands or Born in the USA with a big bang. Um, you know, and then like all the other 
great, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I get I get a lot of comparisons of bands that I like, but I wouldn't say I consciously go to all the time, like the Weaker Thans or Pavement or something. But I mean, I love those bands. But Wilco Wilco is always the one that I look towards, especially for um, like sounds and production and stuff. They're you know they're the best. I I can see that's particularly. Uh kind of like the Yankee Hotel Foxtrot, Sky Blue Sky era Wilco. I could definitely kind of see that influence in you or see this, see it sonically a little bit in what you do. Yeah, totally. That's, that's, that's my bag. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, uh, Elsa, you just mentioned a little bit ago that you already have a follow-up to the latest album, Already Written. Yeah. Uh, when, uh, well, when did you finish recording this one? And are these songs that are left over from those, or are they all songs you wrote, you've written since you finished recording the latest album? Um, no, I, I, I sort of write a bunch of songs, and I figure out what 10 or 12 are going to be on the record, and then I, you know, those remaining 20 sort of get thrown away. They're, you know, they weren't good enough. And then I finished writing this record. I think the record was done, um, like, midway through 2013. So, like, around now, a year ago now, and so... Um, you know, it took me a long time to start writing again because I didn't really, especially with something so personal, I wasn't sure what I was going to write about again and if it would mean as much to me. But um, yeah, I've got another record. You know, I got like 15 songs. I'll probably write a bunch more and I'll have a record and we'll probably start recording it next year sometime. With those, kind of like how this album had had a, uh, a lyrical, I guess, theme or starting ground in it with you revisiting uh your personal life and past is the uh, the songs you've written for a follow-up is there any tangible uh starting point in a similar way or yeah totally um i feel like i i sort of found what i do with this with someday the moon will be gold and um um yeah definitely like i i found uh, it's not it's not the same thing at all but i i yeah i think um this rec this new record definitely has a story and it's you know it's not a concept album but it, it's an album that has a concept in it <laughs> you know yeah i can't wait to hear that when it eventually comes out but in the meantime people can uh, check out the polaris nominated uh someday the moon will be golden it's yeah. a fantastic bit of songwriting and a great album and congratulations again on the polaris nod man yeah, thank you it's, it's crazy to hear it said yeah <laughs> cheers